It's Caleb and welcome to the hashtag Who Dis Podcast. We have gone to extreme lengths, overcome the greatest technical challenges to make this work today, Brooke. We have. It's incredible. <laughs> I can't believe what we've gone through. We've even done a, a run through already and I've screwed up in the first 10 seconds. This is our second run through. This is just one of those days. But I'm pumped. I'm excited. I'm so we, excited. <laughs> we have Leah. It's seen us on the podcast. An absolute legend in the health and wellness space. Uh, Brooke, run us through a bio. Yes. So today on the podcast, we have the wonderful Leah Itzinas, who is an absolute foodie queen. She is passionate about empowering women to feel happier, healthier, and more confident in life. She's the co-founder of Bear Guides, which helps people find a balanced and realistic approach to food and fitness. We are so excited to be speaking with Leah today and to dive deeper into what it means to live a balanced and healthy lifestyle. So welcome to the podcast. Leah. Oh, thank you so much. What, what an intro. What an intro. Even though the second time around, what an intro. <laughs> I'm very grateful to be here. No thank one you will so know. much for having me. No one, no one will know. No one will ever know. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited. Very, very excited. Leah, you make women happier, healthier, more confident. You're the exact person we want to be speaking to on this podcast today. Uh, we're going to start with the hard hitting issues. We know you're an incredible cook, an entrepreneur cook, you call yourself, uh, doing incredible things. So we're going to ask you the tough questions that plague the minds of cooks around the world every single day. It's yay <laughs> or nay is the segment, just a quick yay or nay, but you can actually wouldn't, wouldn't mind if you got into some detail as well. They're controversial points. The first one, pineapple on pizza. Nay, that is serial killer spec. No. <gasps> oh, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> All right. Well, Leah, I hope um, I hope you don't mind talking to two serial killers today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you know what? I, I was, I'm, I'm terrible. I have like these things that I'm picky with and pineapple is one of those, except... There'll be a day where I'll be like, give me pineapple all on my pizza. It just, ha- just has to be. I'm in the mood. It's a mood. It just depends yeah. on the day. <laughs> what about oysters? Bad one. <gasps> never, and it's the worst thing ever, and I know it, but I've never eaten a raw oyster. I've always only ditched bread in the Kilpatrick stuff. Love it, but I've never eaten a real... <laughs> We're getting the, like, the inside that. scoop here. Like, we the, definitely are. Like, this is stuff that's going to be on daily. This is going to be on Daily Mail tomorrow. <laughs> Daily Mail. Leah Sinus <laughs> has not eaten an oyster. <laughs> Have you had a muscle? Yes, don't like them either. So that's why I kind of just avoided. Those. Yeah. Is there any other seafood you don't like? Oh, no, now I'm going to get really on the Daily Mail. I hate anchovies. <laughs> Anchovies no, was one of our really... next questions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. But do you know what? I'm I'm someone who literally, if you tell me that they're not in there and I eat it, I'm like, this is the best thing I've ever eaten. And then you tell me that they're in there and I'm like, oh, yeah, I feel a bit sick. But I'm, I'm that kind of person. So yeah. I probably like them, but I just have this thing in my head that maybe I don't. So who knows? <laughs> I mean, doing, doing my research uh, for this podcast, I learned you love garlic. So all you need to do is maybe just hammer it with some garlic and... <laughs> Uh, that's your that's your secret. I mean, I'm keen to try. If garlic's involved, I'm keen to try. <laughs> oh, I mean, garlic oysters—they're just such a hit, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be next next minute. I'll steal that recipe and be like, "This is how I've had oysters all my life." <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. amazing! All right, well, uh, pickles. Yes, pickles, everything, pickled everything. Yes, yes, yes. That's crazy. I I do not like pickles. I just don't like them. They're too sour. What about other fermented? Oh, we're, we're on a delay here. That's the issue. But sorry, go on, Leah. I gotcha. Um, the best thing would be for us to go for dinner because then I would eat all the stuff and then you would have the fish. We'd have a great time. Oh, my oh, gosh. We need amazing. to make that happen. Yes. 100%. <laughs> Who, who's, eating, who's eating like the crab and the prawns and stuff? Because I'm allergic to that. So that's out for me. Oh, my gosh. Is that you? I'll eat crabs and prawns. Yes, definitely. Uh, oh, I'll, there I'll we go. go. Oh, <laughs> we're set. We, we are like the, the perfect eating trilogy. <laughs> that's it we need to make this happen (laughs) next time we're in south australia yeah uh incredible and what about tofu leah so i was an avid tofu hater for a very long time until i got an air fryer and then i put tofu in the air fryer and now i like it 
Only oh, air really? fryer. Oh. I don't have an air fryer. I don't have an air fryer and I feel like I'm missing out on something. Everyone just raves about them. I am like, it, it was a it was a revolution for me. <laughs> I'm obsessed. I don't even use my oven anymore. I get like annoyed that I have to turn it on and preheat it. I'm like, oh, how annoying. <laughs> what like, a chore. <laughs> yeah, what a chore. Um, yeah, you got to get one. Tofu, yes, air fryer only is my, that's my rule. <laughs> I mean, I've got an air fryer. It is revolutionary and I only put one ingredient in it. What sweet it? potato chips. Oh my gosh, sweet <laughs> potato <laughs> chips. That's actually the one reason I want an air fryer because sweet potato chips are my life. <laughs> uh, bit of garlic, um, the cheating, uh, what is it, Bragg's organic herbs and spices. they got like 24 in them. So like I'm getting 24 like ingredients in one for Crazy. my microbiome and uh, some garlic and some salt, olive oil afterwards. And I'm a happy young man. I'm a that happy young man. That is a good meal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and look, I know um, your Greek background, right? So I know the uh, the answer to this, but olives. Oh my goodness, yes. I don't know a day that has gone by that I haven't had at least five. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Downstairs and it sits right next to the fridge. So every time I go past, I'm like, I'll have one. Of course I'll have one. Oh, and I go to the fridge so like two good. times a day. So, <laughs> so good. I, I tried an olive for the first time last week and I hated it. I actually spat it out because I was like, this is so gross. <laughs> what am I hearing in this podcast? Brooke, how old are you? <laughs> You're, 21. You're 21 and you're, you're just having... It's bad enough Leah hasn't had an oyster. You're having an olive for the first time at 21. <laughs> that is insane. Rages. We need, we, maybe we need to have dinner and we need to actually like put out just random foods and we all need to just go back to the table and, and dry our beers. <laughs> yes, 100%. I think so. I can't... Is there, is there any um, more revelations? Like, Leah, is there anything else you haven't ever tried or, or Brooke? Because I can't think of anything. What is it? I do have one. Oh no, it's a meat pie. I've never had one. <gasps> no way. What? Oh my never gosh. Never eaten a meat pie. No way. Yeah. An Aussie who's never had a meat pie. That's crazy. You, you could get... Veggie pasties, love them, but meat pies, can't do it. You could have your citizenship like stripped off you right now <laughs> if like if the government came and found out. They'll be knocking on your door later today. <laughs> I know. I like. I love the party pies, like the little small ones. But I'll take out all the insides, and then what? I'll just eat the pastry. So really, <laughs> I haven't. I've, I've eaten one, but not just the inside. I've just had the pastry. Oh my, oh my gosh, gosh, that, that is, is crazy. crazy. Have, Have you had, had a sausage, sausage roll at least with some tomato sauce? Yeah, okay, okay. tomato sauce, pasty tomato sauce. Oh my, that was my jam. But just I couldn't do do meat pies. I don't know why. <laughs> oh my gosh. What's the? Uh, what about you, Brooke? What's? Uh, is there something else you haven't eaten oh. that's like mainstream? They're, I can only think of really weird and obscure things right now. Like there's something that my dad eats. It's called a Balmain bug and it, it's like a seafood thing. Uh, and That's like I, crab though, right? Yeah, it's like a shellfish, but it just yeah. looks really like prehistoric weird bug crab thing. And I'm just like, I'm not trying that. That's the only thing that's coming to my mind right now. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, <laughs> Le Leah, what's the weirdest thing you've eaten? um frog legs that's not really that weird but that's the only like fancy thing that i've ever eaten um i don't know was that, that when you went on a holiday yeah i was in yeah i was in france but um yeah, yeah. why else have i eaten i don't know i'm a very cre i'm a creature of habit i don't really like going outside of my <laughs> my circle totally. of things that i like <laughs> yeah totally but i don't know i don't know i really do oh do you know what something else i like and you're gonna mm -hmm. laugh because you'll hate this um <laughs> Drinking pickle juice. Oh, <laughs> yuck. yuck. That's, that's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Whenever I get a container, I just have a little sip. So good. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I actually know someone. That didn't shock me as much because I knew someone that uh, that, that like is obsessed with that. Um, but I don't know. I feel like um, I feel like that's like going to burn your insides. <laughs> 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 even, even though you're like... It, yeah, exactly like yeah what's it like is it 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 would have to be like that's what i imagine was it like really salty yeah. and it really it's acidic, very right? salty yeah it's, yeah. yeah it's salty but depending depending if you get like a sweet version of whatever it is pickle like it can be sweet and sour it can be it's i like the salt that's what i like about it so. nice so. have you fermented your own do you are you the type of person that ferments their own veggies or are you out buying it or like pickles in a jar what do you do and yeah my grandparents ferment 
everything. So I just go there and just be like, I feel like cauliflower for <laughs> But I'll take a jar of these. So I don't do it myself, but I love it. I would, I'd buy it. I'd get it from anywhere. It's so good. Oh, nice. Crazy. I'm imagining you going to grandma and telling her to keep those uh, leftover jars of pickles, even though they're all eaten. Be like, I, I'm thirsty. Yeah. I need some hydration. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need that. 100%. Yes. Oh, that's so good. All right. So chatting about food, you've got your Bear Guides, Leah, which stands for Balanced and Realistic Eating. So tell us a little bit about your journey to becoming an entrepreneur, cook and author with starting your Bear Guides. Where did it all begin? Oh, it's it's such a long story, but also I somewhat like one that I always skip over. Like I skip over and then I go back and I forget things because it's happened really quickly, um, but also in a long time at the same time. Um, but I was a personal trainer in the in my own little home gym, and I did that for three years. And while I was personal trainer, just a bit before that, see, I'll, I'll jump back a bit before that. I was really really sick with glandular fever, so I had to kind of like start making my own meals and. Um, treating my body better. Um, and I started to do that when it came to food. And obviously with my background, my Greek background, it was quite easy to home cook and have meals like that and teach myself how to do that. Um, and then when I was a personal trainer, I really loved the whole holistic bit of health. Like I love the fitness side, but I knew that there was more to it than just slamming yourself in the gym and I really wanted to teach my clients of how good I felt eating really well and how good they can feel at the same time. Um, and so many of my clients would come in with these crazy ideas of crazy like things that they've heard. And um, I just wanted to simplify that. And I really wanted to make that easy for them, but obviously on a small scale because it was just in my home gym. So um, I did a website, I came out with recipes just for them. I tried to help them when it came to any sort of like ideas and stuff like that. And the more I did that, the more excited I would get to be able to create a new recipe and put it out for them and send it to them and whatever. So. I just started to do that and I guess it kind of like snowballed from there. The more I did more online, the more people followed and then the more people wanted something else then I started to create for other people. And then I met my partner and he said, you know, how can like how can you reach more people? Because you've just got, you, you're booked out at the gym. Like, how can you do more? And I was like, well, I feel like maybe we can go online and do something a bit more. So event, like slowly, slowly, we started creating more and then we started like um posting more online and doing all that kind of stuff and then we thought let's put together a guide that we can work with our, our dietitian um we can work with her and we can really you know create something that's true to us and then we can also help people at the same time while helping my clients and then um that's where bear was born <laughs> lovely and um describe a bit more about the mission so you've got uh a couple guides out at the moment right so uh, talk us through uh, what your kind of North Star is with uh, uh, what you want to get out of it and what, what messages you want to preach to your followers. Yeah. So, I mean, the whole thing of bear in itself in totality is balanced and realistic eating. And that's the absolute base of everything that we do. And we want it to be um, simple and easy for people to change their ways or change or make, make healthy change. And um, we want it to be seamless and not stressful. And we want it to be something that, they can take within their, their whole life, not just for a six week period or an eight week period or whatever it is. We want it to be something that they can create and that they can see themselves continuing on in the rest of their lives. Um, so that means, you know, no fad diets, no restriction, no, um, you know, I don't know, random rules that just make no sense until like, you know, six weeks later and then you can have everything again. So it just, all of our guides, so the first guides we did were a healthy realistic eating like just a basic plan of how to get started um and that was awesome we worked with australian guide to healthy eating with that and that was so fun i love doing that and then you know the more our community grew the more questions we had the more community directed um questions and things that we wanted to fix and we were, a lot of us were getting like a lot of the girls in the office were getting asked you know how can i use the bear guide to lose weight or how can i i like you know obviously there is a science to it there's a very fine line between you know going into that whole diet culture thing and then educating so i feel like that fine line is very fine but we tried to walk it and especially with our dietitian we were like let's take on this whole like weight loss stigma thing and let's take it on and let's do it in a healthy way like how can we help people reach their goals because it's not up to me to tell someone like you know you can't lose weight it's not healthy for you like it's it's about that person how they feel um 
And in my own journey with a little bit of weight loss, I really wanted to do it healthily. And I want, but there was no answers. Like there was no straight answer of like, you know, what, what do I have to do? Like, what do I have to do just to feel a little bit better? I don't want to go on some eight week diet. I don't want to ditch carbs. I just want to do what I need to do. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. it was really hard. It was a really, really hard thing to a really hard, like a fine line to, to walk. But I, you know, me and my, dish, my dietitian, like we held hands and we're like, let's do this. And it was a, a bigger beast than I ever thought it was. But um, <laughs> yeah, our, our second guy, Bear Lean, was designed, um, you know, in conjunction with our dietitian to make sure that we can help people reach their goals, but in a healthy way and not, you know, no calorie counting, no restriction, balanced and realistic, which is exactly what it is. So everything we do comes back to that whole, is it balanced? Yes. Is it realistic for an everyday person? Because you know, an everyday person isn't equipped with four years of nutritional knowledge or dietetic knowledge or whatever. So we wanted it to be just easy. Um, and if yes, then we do it. If no, then we rejig until we, it fits. Yeah, yeah, that's so incredible. And even with that word healthy in the social media environment these days, healthy is a word that can just be thrown around a lot, especially with the six week um, program, lose five kilos in six weeks, all of that stuff. But what do you consider to be a healthy diet? I think that it's, you know, there's so many, there's so many different things, but for me, it's something that I can, I'm, I'm happy with. And every day when I eat my meals, I'm excited to eat my meals. I'm, I'm feel satisfied. I don't feel like I'm over full or I'm not eating enough. Um, it's something that I think he like healthy is something that, you know, you're including everything. Unless you've got a medical condition that you need to ditch carbs or whatever it is, like just so that you, there's no stress in it. Like I think healthy is stress less. Like if that, that, if that makes any sense at all. Um, I think being healthy is, you know, doing something that you can continue in the, for the rest of your life, like exercising every day or like, you know, going for a walk every day, getting outdoors, eating healthy, I ha like having lots of veg, having lots of water, socializing, going out for drinks with your friends, all that kind of stuff. I can think that is healthy. Having a balance in life is what I would call healthy. Yeah, yeah. 100%. I mean, the uh, stress increases cortisol levels. It causes your body to go into, um, you know, the sympathetic nervous system and uh, and retain retain fat for the purpose of the fact that the body thinks that it's going into winter hibernation and it needs to start <laughs> storing things so i love the fact i love the the philosophy that you have uh, around uh, health and wellness and uh, i mean the reality is like you know 70 80 percent of your gains even if you are working out come from what you do in the kitchen and the more that you can make that a a process that's easy that's stress-free that's carefree that develops a really healthy relationship with food uh is um is only gonna yeah just set you up for success so I love your philosophy and um, it's so good to hear that um, one, you have it and two, you have such a large audience that you can actually influence with that philosophy. Totally. Um, it's, it's really impressive. Uh, let's talk us through a, a bit more about, um, I mean, the fad diets and the current state of like, you know, because pe like you had fad diets from 20 years ago and it was like you see it in a late night TV commercial. <laughs> now you have... Now you have social media where everything has leverage, everything has exponential awareness. Um, how often are you seeing people like uh, come to you and just being complete like disarray where it's like, I'm seeing like 18 different fad diets that are being promoted um, with people who have that large audience and uh, how much are you able to then like kind of steer them back on the right track and say, uh, like, hey, there is an option for you not to actually have to stress and freak out here on your day to day life and and make things simpler. It's it's a it's a tricky one because we we get it every day, like every single day. Like this morning, I got um, you know, uh, what was it? Having if I have fish and meat in the same day, am I going to be able to um, take on that protein from the meat because I've already had fish? And I was wow. <laughs> I just thought, I, I, you know, and it's valid question, valid question from her, but I just thought like, who's saying this? Like, like who is yeah. telling me these things? Like that it makes no sense whatsoever. But for that person who, again, like I said, doesn't have four years or whatever of nutritional knowledge, they're not going to know. They're just going to like, you know, they're going to take on whatever they're told because that's what then that's all they know. Um, so we hear a lot. And the, the only thing I can do is, continue to educate and educate and educate as, as much as I possibly can because it, it's it is a it, like that like I said the whole 
fad diets, diet culture, all that is a much bigger beast than I thought. Like I did Mm. not realize how big it was going to be and how tough it was. I thought I could come out with this message of like, guys, I've done all the work for you. Eat this delicious food, enjoy it. Take note of your portions. Let's take this in. And then two seconds later, I was like, oh shit, like that's not like, there was lots that we got, you know, we, we didn't realize how much is ingrained in us, if that makes sense. Things that we we get told, like, you know, you can't eat carbs and protein and um, I think it was like comfort and veg in the same meal, otherwise it won't digest properly or whatever. We had to like go back and be like, no, this is how it works. And it's really hard to convince someone who's been told something for, te- for 20 years or whatever it is by their, by their parents or whatever. So I, I, all I can do is just continue to just shout my message as much as I possibly can and hope that it sticks and hope that I can really convince someone um, but it is hard out there and it's totally. a bigger beast than I thought it was. It's yeah. really, really hard. Um, but I guess if you, if all I think about is like if I'm just doing as much as I possibly can, I hope that someone walks past and takes mm-hmm. note and changes their life. Yeah. That's all I can really do. That, that's incredible. It's so great that you're spreading that message because it can be so dangerous with all these these fad diets and people not being educated on on what's right. And I think I even saw um, a TikTok the other day and someone said, oh, when you try to start getting into healthy eating and then next minute you're weighing your spinach to see to count your calories in your spinach. Um, it, I was just baffled by that. And all of the comments were like, yep, I weigh my spinach now and now I can't stop. <laughs> and I was like, oh my goodness. And I know that you're not the biggest fan of calorie counting. Um, do you want to chat a bit about what your thoughts on calorie counting yeah well like so the thing is i i think calorie counting for whenever i think about it i think of my 18 year old cousin who has is coming out of school and who has no idea about nutrition whatsoever um which is fine but i just think about if i promote that what's she gonna think and how does she how is she that like you know how would that help help her or how would she take on that and I think that it would be for her if she starts calorie counting from such a young age Mm -hmm. she won't I I don't know how to explain it but I don't think that she'll take on from an educational point of view she'll take it on as a stress point of view whether whether it be like from a number so instead of thinking like I think calorie counting just putting it out there is fine if it's done in an educational way because people yeah, yeah. need to know what's in their food. Like what is in a donut? What is in, you know, your big delicious chicken and rice? Milk? What, like it doesn't, you don't need to know exact numbers, but just to have a rough idea of what is and what is, and that's fine. I think that's great. But when it comes down to like, you know, not having an extra 20 mils of lemonade because you're going to run out. It's just, I think that can get mm-hmm. a little bit too stressful. And I think when I, again, when I think of my cousin, I think she would take it on and as stressor and that would then damage her relationship with food. Whereas I, who have dietitians behind me who work in an office that has, you know, we talk about that all the time. It doesn't bother me, but I don't want to think that I'm, I, I would think that I'm an anomaly when it comes to that kind of stuff. A lot of people get caught out and then they start to stress and rather than focus on you know, I've got protein, I've got lots of carbs, I've got a great amount of veg, I've got a good amount of color, everything tastes delicious. I'm really happy with this meal. You then go, I've got 90 grams of this when it should be 60 and I've got 60 and it just, it's more about a number, not about, you know, your composition of your meal. It's now- It's a numbers numbers game. And I just think that, I just think that's not fun. Like, I don't think that's fun at all. I think that's really, I don't know. I just, I think it's, it's too much effort, I think. And especially for people who are, who are young, I think it's great when you get to an age where you know that it won't, or, or a mindset that you know that it won't affect you, but if it starts to affect you, then I don't think it's a good idea. It has its place. I think it it definitely has its place. I mean, there's calories out there that are extremely important, like to add even more on top of what you're normally doing. Like you can't compare like a a prebiotic fiber or a a resistant starch or, you know, insoluble, soluble fiber that might not, that's not there to actually be digested, but move through your digestive tract that still has calories and then compare that to like a, uh, you know, a, a sugar or whatnot that you might get in a soda that doesn't have any fiber involved and goes you know straight into your spike in your blood sugar levels so um doesn't you know, take all that into account exactly so i mean like having calories are extremely important um but obsessing over them 100 percent agree with you like and i get and i guess and there, there lies that like yeah there lies that like fine line of um weight loss because we all know you need to be in a deficit to lose weight and that's fair enough but then again 
it's very hard to then say like to someone, you know, don't worry about it because it unfortunately it is the point of science that you need to, you not need to worry about it, but you need to be aware. Awareness is key. I think awareness and knowledge is key for sure, because you can't let a lot of people come to us, you know, I've been working out six days this week and I've, been, I've worked out that for the last two, two months. And I'm not lost hundred grams. I'm like, but because maybe because your nutrition might not be, you know, you're not fueling you know your body I mean? properly. Yeah. You're not, yeah. Either that or you're eating too much and under reporting or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. It's just, we, I think that that needs to be that awareness and knowledge first, and then you can take mm-hmm. it how you, how which you is just why like um, guides such as yourself, like your bear lane is so important. Like it actually gives you the tools that you don't need to go and, um, uh, spend four years trying to figure this out. Like you can get the basic knowledge, but you can actually turn up to your kitchen each day and know that what you're putting into yourself is something that's actually going to support your health. And if, if you're striving for weight loss, weight loss as well. Same reason, same principles that Tropeka exists. It's all about the fact that um, we provide high quality nutrition that you can take conveniently that you know is actually going to help you. Um, you can take on the run every single day. So no, we're, um, we're big believers in, uh, in the same philosophy as you. Uh, so it's fantastic. So just a quick little diversion of topic. Guys, if you haven't subscribed to this podcast, what are you doing? What are you doing? Hit that subscribe button. You know we have the most amazing guests that come on every single time. I say it all the time and you probably don't believe me, but then like, hey, we got Leah on. Like who's going to be next? You know, like the proof is in the pudding. Hit subscribe. You're going to hear some amazing guests um, and... Make sure you get us on social. This is the Tropeka podcast, the hashtag who this podcast for Tropeka. So uh, at T-R-O-P-E-A-K-A on Instagram, YouTube. Where are we? We're all over the web. Every single TikTok, social media platform Snapchat. we're there. <laughs> and um, Leah, you might as well promote yourself now as well. We'll do it again at the end. What's your what's your handles? May as well. Um, it's at Leah Itzinas on Instagram, Facebook, same as you, website, all over. <laughs> All of the above. If you're going to go and follow Tropeka, you definitely got to follow Leah at the same time. We'll totally. tell you, we'll remind you at the end again. Anyway, back into the podcast. Incredible. So Leah, for people who are just getting started into their fitness and their, their health journey and discovering how to have a healthy relationship with food, what are three tips that you can give to them on beginning that journey and getting it all started? Um, I always say this, I say this is my like number one overarching tip um, is to add more into your day and not take away. So things like, you know, if you want to change habits that are like, you know, you don't want to have soft drink or you don't want to have chocolate at night or whatever it is, add more into your day instead of focusing on what you need to remove. So adding more vegetables into your day, adding more water, adding more flavor to your meals, adding more exercise into your day, whatever it is, the more you add, the more you'll inadvertently get those things that you actually want to get rid of out, if that makes sense. Um, Which is one of my biggest things. I always, cause you know, when people think weight loss or people think they want to make change, I think they need to just ditch things instead of doing more. Um, So adding more into your day is the best is what I always say. And secondly, definitely starting smaller than, you know, you don't need to go join a gym and sign up for 10 classes and, you know, scrap your fridge or whatever it is, like one meal at a time, one workout at a time, one healthy habit at a time, um, and then build on that. The more you build, the better it is to be able to develop those healthy habits over time. Um, And third, probably one of my favorites actually, again, is um, changing it up. So instead of, if you are someone who loves to weight train or you love to have specific meals or whatever, pick one meal a day or one meal a week or one exercise or one anything that is completely out of your comfort zone just to get a little bit of a spark in your day. Like the other day I went to, um, the other day, it was like six months ago. Don't listen to me. (laughs) I went to a a public pool and I went down to like, it was, it's this um, aquatic center. And I went in there and I was like, I'm going to swim. Swimming's easy. I love swimming. I got out the pool and I looked like, freaking I don't even know, like a sloth. I was like, this is the only thing I've ever done. I couldn't, it was so hard. Like swimming for real is the hardest thing ever. So I, and then I got out the pool and I felt so good. I was like, I feel winded. I feel like I've been put back down in my place. I feel so good. And then I, next day when I had my next workout, probably in the gym, I was like, this is great. I can do anything. It was so much fun. So um, changing it up is definitely something I would recommend. So good. Changing it up and getting out of your comfort zone. Um, you spoke about choosing your favorite this or that. So what's your favorite 
What's your favorite recipe and what's your favorite workout? Oh, my favorite workout right now, um, we bought a, we've got a stair machine downstairs. So I love to do like really heavy weights and like really heavy, like whatever it is. And then jump on the stair machine to like sprint up there, like 150 steps or whatever, and then get off. And you literally feel like someone's punched you in the chest, but it feels so <laughs> good. It feels so sweaty. And it feels amazing. That's my favorite. That's my favorite workout for right now. Um, and my favorite recipe we had nachos last night and it was great, but I'm such a person that I will literally, I'm, I always call myself a liar because I say like everything is my favorite. Like I'm, I'm just my favorite. <laughs> and then tomorrow it would, something else would be my favorite. So I wouldn't listen to me, whatever I say. <laughs> well, I've got you. I've got your next workout planned, um, running on the, the swimming vibe and the, the stairs and the, um, the weights. So, you know, those crazy people that like, put weights in their hands and they go yes. to the bottom of the ocean and they just walk and they're like almost just walking along. I mean, it's so maybe, bizarre. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's your next thing where uh, you're just doing <laughs> some stairs down, down, down on the bottom, bottom of the pool. pool. <laughs> I can't even walk straight on, on land, let alone walk. <laughs> I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. <laughs> Wonderful. Report back to us. <laughs> If you're still living. (laughs) Incredible. And for those people who are starting their health journey and, and, and it comes down to learning what true health really does look like, what do you think it means to be truly healthy and what does a healthy person look like? It's, it's, it's so different for everyone and everyone, but for me, I am happy and healthy when I am, I don't know, I, I, I've got all parts of my life. Like when I'm with my partner, I, I love like, you know, don't go on date nights and socializing and all that kind of stuff that might, that makes me feel healthy because it makes me feel like I'm not, you know, strict in routine. Um, you know, having really, really delicious homemade meals. I love that kind of stuff. I've got a good exercise routine. I feel like my skincare routine is terrible. So let's not go there, but um, like just, <laughs> I guess it's, I don't know. It's more of like a holistic way of looking at it. If you're, um, happy and you're content in a, in all areas of your life or you think you want to make changes and you're actively doing that, I think that's healthy. That's so true because sometimes health can be just down to the fitness and eating, but you've got to remember all of those other parts of your life, like socializing and spending time with your loved ones and and all, all of that stuff. So that's so important. Um, one of your top tips as well that I've heard for getting into eating healthy, especially when you're on a bit of a time crunch, is meal prepping. So what are your tips for meal prepping and why do you think it's so important? Um, meal prepping is something that I never used to do. And like, I would be the person to be like, I'm not putting my meals in containers. That's gross. I'm not eating leftovers. That's gross. I'd be like, um, was one of those. I won't say the word, but. <laughs> <laughs> Just say it. Cause I'm one of those. I'm one of those people. <laughs> I already, I already know I'm a serial killer well. today. So uh, <laughs> what else am I? <laughs> I any more names. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, I never used to do it until we came out with bear. I thought, Right. If I'm going to tell other people that meal prepping is great, because it actually came from our dietitian. She's definitely one to do that. And I was like, right, I'm going to give it a good go. And I literally, ever since launching the first bet, which was 2018, 2019, I don't remember which one it was, one of those, it was in January, <laughs> whatever it was, I have not stopped meal prepping every weekend since then, unless I've been away. Wow. Like it literally has been, and it's not like I don't meal prep and I don't, I'm not one of those people like, don't worry, I'm like, you can't. I'm not one of those people who sit there and put every <laughs> single meal in the fridge and have it all like shiny. I, I just do the bare minimum of what I need to do to make my life easy when it comes home. Like tonight I've made bolognese, but I made it on Sunday and I froze it in little packets perfect so i just defrost that make some pasta done so that's kind of like how i go for meal prepping i just do the the bigger job on the weekend and then at night time i'll come home and cook fresh so um it's completely changed my outlook because i feel organized i feel ready i feel like it's easy to st- not stick to your routine it's easy to stick your routine it's just easy to have everything organized so that you feel better and you feel fresh and you're not so frazzled when you get home at six o'clock at night you're like i don't know what i'm cooking do i need to go to the shops like well i'll just have toast or whatever like i feel like i've definitely yeah. been fueled and made better decisions lee i've already given you the answer it's um sweet potato fries in an air fryer <laughs> <laughs> every night every single night <laughs> sweet potato fries. so good oh yeah, exactly. Well, come on. I'm a bit orange today. I got my matching orange shirt. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> yeah, lovely. Hey, you didn't get the memo, Brooke. What's I did happened? not get the memo. I'm the odd one out here. <laughs> Well, look, uh, just a little bit of a PSA, um, public service announcement. Please make sure when you meal prep, BPA-free containers, phytate-free plastic containers. It's so, so important. Uh, or glass, easy way to get around. Yeah, love, but, my, um, love my glass ones, yeah. Really yeah. Uh, Joe Rogan just had um, a leading uh, health expert on uh, on his po- podcast last couple of days. Can't remember her name, uh, the doctor's name, but she's been studying it for the last 20 years. And she actually talked about not only BPA, but phytates. I think that's how you, phytolates? Phytolates, sorry. Um, and uh, and like the, the crazy issues that they cause on like pregnancy and stuff like that. Mm. So I'm not trying to freak anyone out, but... Um, <laughs> Don't listen to me. Go listen to that amazing expert um, <laughs> because she'll explain it a whole lot better. But, um, yeah, totally. it's, it's something that's, uh, that's a serious issue that we have um, in the world. But glass is amazing as well. Absolutely. Um, for getting around it. I want to talk a little bit about your, your fitness journey, uh, Leah, because uh, you had a serious back injury, right? Um, can you uh, run everyone through what happened, um, how you had to rejig things and how you changed your ap- approach and, and where, you're at to, where you are at now? Yeah, sure. Um, so I literally did nothing to injure my back, which is probably the most frustrating thing. Um, I was just sitting on a seat, like a low little bench and I just got up, but I got up on one leg to like get up and step up. And I couldn't, from then I couldn't walk. I wow. was like frozen in that place. Um, it was actually my birthday <laughs> um, in 2016, I think it was. And we had heaps of people at my house, um, family, and they were, I they actually called me because they're like, let's, let's do, do your birthday cake or whatever. And I got up and I looked at my sister and I looked at her and I just shook my head and she was like, what's happened? I was like, I've hurt my back. Like, I don't know what's happening. Cause I didn't, at the, at the time I had no idea like, what back injury was. And I was like, I, I can't move. And she was like, don't be silly. Like, come on, let's go. And I was like, no, I, I can't. I literally can't move. And she was like, oh fuck. Like, sorry. <laughs> she, was like, <laughs> she was like, Oh no, like, let's um, like, what can we do? Cause everyone's outside. We were, we were basically like in my gym at the time. Cause I was working at home. We were in my gym. She's like, what can we do? I was like, I don't know. She's like, just close your eyes and let's just walk down there and you'll be fine. I was like, okay. And I, it was like probably the most excruciating walk I've ever done. It was down, down some God. steps and down. And I sat down and I got there, I was okay. And I got there, I was sitting at the edge of the chair and I was holding on, and I was shaking and everyone was singing happy birthday to me. And I was looking at um, my sister and I was just shaking my head and she was like, you're okay, like, just pretend. And they're like, didn't blow, like, blow out the candles, but I couldn't move. <laughs> and oh, no. I had to get my cousin to be like, blow out the candles. And I'd like, she she did it. And I got it, like, once I, everyone moved away, I had to, had to tell my mom, my mom was like, my mom freaking out. I was like, oh my God. Um, but basically, oh my my headphone um basically since then I have so what I did was I bulged two discs at that time when I stood up um one wow. actually touched uh, my s1 nerve which is like my static nerve so it shot down my leg that's why I couldn't step forward wow. or move um and it over time like it got I, but it was about a week that I couldn't walk by myself or get myself changed or whatever um poor, poor my partner we were together for like two months before after that happened then he had to like shower me and get me changed it was really oh cool. my gosh um, that's how you knew but, he was the one right <laughs> yeah well I mean pretty much he had no choice <laughs> yeah yeah um I I basically ignored it for three years I basically was like it would be I'd be good for a week and then I'd do something in the gym and I'd hurt myself and then I'd be good mm. I'd be bad for two weeks so it was like one week on two weeks off one two weeks on three weeks off and then sometimes it'd be six weeks off and it would just I got into a point where I literally was so angry and frustrated and like bitter about my back and I every time I'd hurt myself I'd be like why me and uh, blah 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 and all this stuff and I, it was it was honestly probably the hardest thing I have ever in my entire life had to like come to terms with if that makes sense like I, yeah. I, it was so hard to be like right I am injured it's okay like how can we fix this and it took me a very 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 long time and many 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 physios and many people telling me oh just try yoga or have you tried breathing and I'm like oh I do that every day <laughs> like, um, <laughs> to just 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 to get past that like that bitterness it was a, mm. it was a lot and I still every day if I if I even feel a niggle I'm like and I'm like no you're fine <laughs> like it's okay <laughs> um but now at the moment I am training 
fine. I, I don't, I now I have like kind of like cut ties with like my favorite types of type of training. And that's like, you know, jumping around and plyometric and all that fun stuff. I, like I mm. love training like that, but I know that I just can't do it. Um, not that I can't, it's just that it will, it has bigger like injury rates than regular mm. weights do. So I just thought, you know, what can I do instead of what can't I do? And try to really focus on what I can I, what can I do, what can I do? So if I was in mid-workout and I felt my back niggle or I felt like a little needle I just think like okay if I can't do this there's something else in the gym that I can do regardless mm-hmm. if it's like laying on my back just I don't know what it is I can do something and the more I did that the more confident I got in my back um and I'm feeling a lot better like now now I probably have one or two days every couple of months that I'm sore but other than that I'm pretty good yeah. fingers crossed <laughs> Oh, well, that's great that you have any wood. (laughs) (laughs) That's great that you're improving. And it was interesting what you said about your partner being that you knew he was the one when he helped you out because I can see that shiny engagement ring on your finger. So, congratulations. So good. So excited. Finally, can't even long enough to do that. (laughs) So exciting. Um, And now a lot of young women out there might find their motivation to go to the gym from comparing themselves to others and and unhappiness in themselves, especially in this world of social media and and comparison and everything like that. Um, What would be your message to those people on how they can find the right motivation to to get into their health? And that's not just all about being, being as skinny as you can but what would your message be to them it's, it's a real tough one because every day you know we're, we're thrown into a deeper you can you can just go online and you'll just be bombarded with what you think you should mm. look like or or feel like or whatever but the the like as soon as you stop focusing on other people the like your world will change the, as soon as you stop thinking like you know as soon as you stop with your mindset you see a photo and you think I wish I could be like that now and this comes to back to my back I think you know, if I see my sister, who's an incredible fitness trainer, she jumps and she does all that stuff. And instead of, I used to get really frustrated. I didn't, and I stopped training with her because she would make me feel like, well, not she would make me, I would make myself feel like, why can't I do that? That's not fair on me. Mm -hmm. Like, but that's not her problem. That's, that's a me problem. That's a my, that's a my insecurity problem. And I, um, I now think, you know, like I'm so happy for her. I'm so proud of her. Now, what can I do? And how can I be proud of myself? I can be proud of myself that I can do a 40 kilo deadlift. I can be proud of myself that I'm in the gym every day, giving it my best. I can be proud of myself that I'm eating my own meals and cooking and, and, and increasing my skill, whatever it is, instead of focusing on other people. It had nothing to do with anybody else, but it's just to do, to do with me and my own you know, issues or whatever it is. But what I would focus on is starting to focus on you and and not just not just the outside, like what how do you treat people? How do you make people feel when you see, when they see you, you know, how do you, it's not only about what you look like and how good you are in the gym. It can be about anything else. Like I think I'm a really good person. So I really like, I like, I play on that, like in my, in the back of my head, like I'm a really good person. I deserve this. It's really hard. And it's very hard not to compare yourself to other people, but the, the, you know, the more things that you think about yourself and the more things you realize about yourself, um, and you focus on about yourself, yeah, your world will definitely change. It's hard, but you got to do it. <laughs> I like that. I really, really like that. Um, especially, yeah, coming from yourself where, uh, like, goodness me, like, comp- like, we all don't have a sister like you, right? You know, so for you to, <laughs> for you to, for you to kind of have that attitude is, um, like so friggin' impressive. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys are a very um, iconic duo as well. Kayla's got the 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 fitness, and you've got you've, you've got the food. It's it's pretty cool. I call us Kath, I call us Kath and Kim all the time. Totally, <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally Kim. <laughs> Sharon, I don't know. Sharon probably. I don't know which one I am. But, well, who, who's um, the better cook in that relationship? I can't. I'm trying to can't, remember yeah. back. Uh, it was definitely Kim. It was Either no. no wait, 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 which, which one's, one's the old one? one? Ka- I don't remember. <laughs> I've got I haven't no watched it in years. The, Kathy's the mum. Kim's the one with the the, just the fancy one. She's uh, like, okay. Our international listeners at the moment are like, what are they talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and what's a meat pie? Yeah, literally. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> So we're into our favorite segment of every podcast, hashtag spirulina shots. <laughs> Lee, have you ever had spirulina? I have before. 
but not in a one to four shot ratio. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I always forget to show it as well. We always show the uh, we always show the shots that we've got, but just so people know, it, Tropica spirulina. That's the one that we use. Uh, for those that haven't who may be Leah's followers that are maybe tuning in to this podcast and haven't seen our previous ones. Uh, spirulina, the upsides is it's the most badass superfood on the planet or one of. Uh, very convenient, take it on the run. It's so good that actually NASA has been researching it for long-term space missions. Uh, very nutrient-dense. Downsides of it is it tastes like creek. <laughs> and when you add water to it, it tastes like creek water. So w- I know, so... W- what better thing to do, Leah, than just uh, have a podcast where we shot some creek water together? <laughs> That's the plan. And I agree. Exactly. Exactly. Hey, yeah. it's um, it's uh, it's better than oysters. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's pro- uh, that's true. <laughs> maybe maybe not maybe. pickle juice. You might not like it as much as pickle juice. But <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing's better than that. <laughs> so how the um, how the game works here is uh, we'll ask you two questions each. Uh, from your Instagram, uh, describing it. If you get the uh, the question correct, uh, then we have to do a spirulina shot, whoever asked the question. If you get it wrong, you're the one who has to do the spirulina shots. We'll do it all together at the end, like shots should be done. And <laughs> um, and we'll film it as well yep. for our Instagram. I'm a bit nervous, Caleb, because I think that Leah is going to get all of these right. So I feel like we could be doing all four shots well, today. To be honest, I'm... I, was, I have a... Uh, yeah. You go, you go. <laughs> I was a bit low on energy actually at the moment because I hadn't eaten for quite a while before the podcast. <gasps> I saw you chewing down your food and I'm like, oh man, I need some. So I'm actually desperate <laughs> to get these wrong because I need some spirulina, man. He needs the nutrients. I need the, yeah, I need uh, to get through. All righty, we'll dive into the first one. So this is a reel that you posted on January 11th this year. So not that long ago. You're wearing your iconic denim blue apron, standing next to your fiance Mitch in the kitchen. What are you making? Oh my god! <laughs> the eleventh January, eleventh of January, standing next to Mitch in the kitchen. Why would I be standing next to him in the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> Think. Would be making a spirulina shot because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you were making a coffee. Oh show no! Show it, show it, show it, show it. <laughs> we have in the kitchen together. I sh- <laughs> <laughs> it was this one here. Oh, because I filmed him. Good, look how good he looks. Oh god, dang it, dang it, dang it. Look, one, oh, so good. All right, so one nil, Team Tropico. We're up. Uh, second question, Leah, are you ready? So it's an yes. it's an no because I'm gonna get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an image from uh, November sixteenth, twenty twenty. You're in the kitchen again. Oh wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in the kitchen, um, wearing an all black outfit with a very excited look on your face. Uh, you're holding out a big dish of food. What did you make? Did you make? Black outfit. Yeah. Oh my God. yeah, black outfit with a very excited look on your November 16th, 2020. If it helps, maybe that's just before Black Friday period. <laughs> um, you're holding holding out a holding out a, a big dish. If it has say excited face, it's something like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's my just that's my face. <laughs> Oh no. I have no idea. I'm gonna help you out. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go. help you out. Because of sympathy and also wanting to do some spirulina my shot myself, um, <laughs> you've got uh, some. Yeah, I'm gonna. This one should actually help you get it. You've got some lemon in the dish. Oh. Mm. Have lemon in everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness me! Uh, well, I didn't say. I didn't. <laughs> Yeah, that's um, they kicked out ninety percent of my dishes. The dish is about oh, this big. big. It's like that? Yes, it's very yes. big. No, very no big. you're in no. front though, but it's big. It's a big dish. It's really big. The tray of something. I'm gonna go ahead and say a tray bake of some sort, like chicken tray bake with lemon in it. Oh, <laughs> you're close. You were so close. <laughs> 
It nah. was a it's a lamb roast. <laughs> lamb roast. Studio kitchen. You that's how you got me off. I was like thinking uh, it was my home kitchen. I was like, no. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> gotcha. So, <laughs> so two to Leah. Two Neil oh, Trapeka. Man. All right. Well, this one might help you out. So this one's from February first, twenty twenty one. So we're getting a little bit closer to closer to today. It's a real you're making a dish from your bear guide and I'm going to tell you three ingredients in the dish and you have to tell me what it is. So you've got broccoli, rice and mushroom. Oh my God. Broccoli, oh, rice and mushroom. <laughs> I thought the rice uh, in there might help you out. The rice does help, so, but do you, so you know when you get put on a spot and you just have no idea, I've never created a recipe my whole life. That's exactly <laughs> <laughs> the rice is a very key ingredient yeah broccoli and mushroom would be like i'm just trying to think it's not it's definitely not a tray bake it can't be the tray bake or can it be the tray bake no, <laughs> <laughs> is it oh uh, you've got, uh, a you've got risotto you've got... yes y- yes it's a vegetable risotto yes you got it <laughs> no caleb i'm gonna have to do this i'm gonna have to do this shot <laughs> I always uh, end up. Suck him. I'm going to enjoy watching you anyway. <laughs> so there you go. That's it. I knew that's the one. That's it. Got it. Got it. Got it. How about All right. It? This is a big moment, Leah. It's either to tie with Team Tropeka here <laughs> or for us to just dominate. <laughs> so it's a post from August 9th, 2020. Oh, I can't say that or I'll give it away. Okay. You are in a black top doing the bird dog Pilates pose. Where are you? <laughs> Drink up. It I'm at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm, no. I, I'm, at the, I'm at the park. I'm at the park. <laughs> no, no, you're not at the park. <laughs> I think I've been on this same place. It's the um the wharf and the jetty in South Australia. Beach. Australia. Yeah, she was totally that's ex- right. That's she exactly the photo I was thinking of. There is a massive difference of the beach and the wharf and the jetty. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb, to get to the wharf, you have to go. No, on the we beach. need a third party. <laughs> we we need a third party. All right. Well, look, you know what? We, I'm going to do it, but we're going to put out an Instagram story right now on this and ask people. Is the wharf and the jetty, <laughs> should it be considered part of the beach? <laughs> like my like brain, my the girls in the office laugh at me because they, they'll be like, Leah, what ingredient does the this whatever recipe is have in it? And I was like, oh, it's sweet potato. And they're like, how do you remember that you have 700 recipes or something? I'm like, I just remember the like the photo. Like I know because yeah. I take yeah. the photos. Yeah. I was like, I know yeah. what I've put in the photo. So if I think about the photo, I know what's in it. And they're like, that is the weirdest thing ever. So when you said that <laughs> that black top, I was like, I was at the beach. I know that yes. photo. Like, yes. I've got... <laughs> that morning I got up at 5 a.m. and I had to go to the beach. <laughs> yeah, to get that sunrise. Yeah. I don't know where I was. <laughs> is that the um is that the wharf? I think I've been on it. Is it the wharf and the jetty? at that place where in South Australia where it's the end of the train line or an old train line or something. I can't remember what it's called. That's cool now. So this was this was like Henley Beach. So it was like, oh, I don't know, three or four, two beaches down that way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cause, uh, yeah, I remember some like place in South Australia where it's like this historical train and it like goes once a day or something. But yeah, okay. That's a beautiful jetty. Anyway, we'll show for those watching, uh, listening on audio, You can jump on YouTube and we'll have like the overlay of it Mm -hmm. for you to check out. Let's do these spirulina shots. You're recording, but at first we're we're asking this all important question. I'm going to say. All right, guys, we're doing spirulina shots. We have Leah. It's seen us on the podcast today. An absolute legend. Now, huge controversy, huge controversy. On the last question to tie things up, we asked Leah, hey, where are you? What, what's this called? Dog bird yoga bird, pose. Bird dog bird pose. Dog <laughs> pose. And we said, where are you? She said we. Uh, she was at the beach. Now, that's a wharf. That's a jetty. Does that count as being at the beach technically? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say... It literally goes I say into yes. the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Let All us right. know in the poll here. <laughs> I'll save cool. those. Ready, All right, you ready, Leah? I would put a mute button on this. <laughs> Are we ready? Three, one, 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 two, one, 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 one,
I'll tell you, I'll tell you when. Sorry, um, <laughs> she's just getting it ready. All right, I'll start talk. Stop, stop here. I'll start talking, and then you'll know. Okay. All right, we got our spirulina shots. I'm doing one. Brooke, you're doing one. Over to Leah. She's doing two. Let's go, Leah first. Ready? Three. Go. Three. Go. <laughs> <laughs> That is creep water if I've ever tried it. Still, 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 still got some left. <laughs> oh, it's right. so great. Oh, no, if I could do that. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ah, so gross. <laughs> Show us your tongue, Leah. Oh, so gross. <laughs> All right, good stuff. I need more energy, so I'm going another one. Oh, my gosh, you're cr he's crazy. He's crazy. You're crazy. Oh, You're crazy. Deep. I'm already deep. In All right, into the final questions. Leah, that was so much fun. We've cleaned ourselves up. We're ready to go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, so if you could uh, give one piece of advice to a young Leah, what would it be? Oh, enjoy every single second of it, of your life your social life your anything just enjoy every single second I don't even know like I always think about my old work like I used to work at Woolies or I used to go out to the party with my friends and I just don't think I was ever in that moment because I was just I don't know what I don't know what it was but enjoy and like soak it all in that's what I would take that's that's incredible. And what future goals do you have for yourself? Obviously, you've made an incredible mark with your guides and everything like that but what do you want to see in your future? I definitely like, you know, with work goals, I definitely want to have, you know, number number one nutrition app. I want to do that kind of stuff. I want to um, expand into like, a, definitely like a food business, like have some sort of like presence on the shelves um, in my life. I'd love to become a mom at some point soon, um, except <laughs> having my puppy. I'm like, maybe I'm taking that a little bit too far. Maybe. <laughs> maybe <I'm not> <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I just want to, I, this year I said to my partner, I said this year, all I want to do is have fun yeah, and that's it. Like I get money is important when we have a business and whatever, but I just want to do things that make me happy and that make totally. us have fun. Um, also so, important. Yeah. That's literally, I just want to have fun with everything I do. Talking about fun, happiness. What is uh, the fun things that you do in your spare time? You know what? I'm the worst. I cook. <laughs> I get like my smoker out and I get my whole, like my family to come over and I just make huge, ridiculous meals. Like that's, I, that's generally what I like doing. I also like bike riding. Bike riding is one of my favorites, but not like a like for bike riding. Like I would only ride like 20 minutes. And I think it's the funniest thing ever. Um, and hang out with my, my puppies and my family. So I, I'm very, I'm not a very uh, adventurous person. <laughs> I just like to do what I usually do. You're adventurous with your food, though, and that's all that counts. <laughs> Except for oysters. <laughs> Except for oysters, yeah. Well, well, we'll change that when we go on our um, our dinner outing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Um, one more. I mean, this is one we had penciled in for the start of the podcast, but we skipped it, but we're not going to skip it. We've got to do it. <laughs> what, is, uh, what is something about yourself that we, uh, yeah, that people might not expect? Oh, I don't know. I think probably um, a lot of people would maybe think that I'm more extroverted than introverted, but I definitely am more of a shy, introverted person in person than out there, if that makes sense. Like I, if I, I love totally, my totally. quiet time. I love my quiet space. I love like hanging out with my family. Like I don't like going out to like big places with lots of people. I get really like overwhelmed. Um, so yeah, I feel like me being shy is probably something that people don't know. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I'm pretty much a very, an open book. So who knows? Yeah. yeah and you're an, you're especially an open book on all of your social media accounts, you know, showing the ins and outs of your life as well as all of your bear guides, your food, everything like that. Um, so where can we find you on social media? Plug your handle for us one more time. <laughs> so I guess the best one is Instagram. That's where we are all the time. So um, it's at Leah at Sinus. Facebook's the same. Um, website is leahsinus.com and Bear guides, if you just Google that, bear, B-A-R-E guides, um, it'll pop up. So, yeah. Perfect. Amazing. Leah, you're an absolute uh, inspiration and a star. Thank you so much for what you're doing and the message you're preaching uh, to to so many around the world. Um, 
make sure you go follow Leah and make sure you go and follow Tropeka at Tropeka, T-R-O-P-E-A-K-A across all the socials. Subscribe to this podcast. Please leave us a, a review on Apple Podcasts as well. We'd really appreciate that. Uh, and uh, once again, thank you, Leah. Thank you, Brooke. We will see everyone in the next episode. Take care. Thanks so much, guys.